So this is the new uh, Synology router. Yep, exactly. So we already uh, we already released uh, last year the RT one thousand nine hundred AC that you already covered. And since the market has been very good to us, uh, we decided to release the bigger version, which is the RT 216, uh, two, uh, 2600 AC. So right here is the 1900, uh, this one over there. So it's selling really good. Yep. So it's uh, we've been very satisfied with the sales. So you the this is the first router you made, right? Yep, the previous one. And no, that's the second one. And you, you basically went in and you showed the whole industry how to make a router or what? Uh, well, we still don't have, you know, uh, we, we, we're not first in terms of market share because uh, we're still penetrating the market. Uh, however, uh, we, we do have very good results in terms of sales and we did receive a lot of positive feedback on our user interface, which is kind of, as you said, we're trying to redefine a bit uh, what's been uh, what's been done in this area? So, how do you redefine? Is it uh, is it kind of like uh, does it have anything to do with software defined networking or um, what is it? Maybe about? not. I would not use uh, such strong words for a router of this size. But uh, what I would say to uh, to summarize it, it brings a lot of basic advanced feature uh, through an interface that's usable by someone without a PhD in computer science. And at the same time, we, you know, because at the origin we're a storage vendor, so you can turn your router into a small NAS server that brings a lot of values for both our consumer users and at the enterprise. So you can turn your home into a cloud server? Yep, uh, actually we are also releasing uh, some, our router runs on what we call Synergy Router Manager. It's our operating system. Uh, shortened for with SRM and we're entering the 1.1 beta version very soon and this will feature the cloud, st the cloud station package that will allow you to either uh, back up your data, uh, synchronize your data among different devices or if you use a client on Windows and Mac that we developed ourselves called cloud station backup it's going to allow you to do real-time backup of your uh, computer through your router. It sounds awesome. And um, it's fast? Yeah, it's pretty fast because everything is done real time. So uh, as soon as the file has been uh, modified, you already have a version on your router. And it at first, it's leveraged all our experience in of backup. So you can access to something like six, a bit more than 60,000 versions. Um, of course, you are limited by the space at the end, but you can go back in time through the interface and let's say even uh, currently, we are trying to explain to our users that it's probably the, the best uh, protection against ransomware. Uh, as you might be aware of it, uh, ransomware are getting uh, pretty big on the internet. And uh, being able to roll back to a previous version of your file from uh, five minutes ago, that's uh, the, the best thing you can do against ransomware. Okay, um, roll back. And, and uh, so what's, what's new about this one? Okay, so this one, uh, the first obvious thing is it has four uh, antenna. So this is a uh, high-speed uh, MU rainbow antenna. Um, it also features you know, the, what we become uh, a classic for Synergy router. So here you got the regular USB port, but on the side you got USB 3 and SD card. So this is the USB 3 port and the SD card. So it allows you to plug a bit of uh, storage to turn your router, uh, your, na your router into a NAS. So you have a USB 2 and a USB 3? Yeah, and an SD card. Why would you have a 2 and a 3? What do you do in, in one oh, and the other? Okay, uh, so USB 3 would be more for storage. And uh, maybe, for instance, for USB 2, you can plug in a 4G modem, a 4G modem and uh, that brings us to a new feature in SRM 1.1. Uh, you can actually do some failover or load balancing between different network inputs. So let's say you got uh, your main internet landline here, 4G here, and you live in a place where internet is not that stable. So when this uh, one port uh, goes offline, you switch directly from your 4G stick here. Nice. And at the same time, uh, this is more for our enterprise user. When you got two internet access uh, to, to get more speed, for instance, you can have actually two one port because this, really? yeah, this LAN port here.
can be converted into a one port. Really, I was just about to ask that I wish it was possible, and it's yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Because Is it not a 1900? Um, this one has to be confirmed. Uh, this, yeah. this feature has to be confirmed. So, so right here, there's two one, so you can buy two internet access and combine them. Yes, yes, and do some load balancing between the both of them. So when you when you download stuff, it can use both internet access at the yeah. same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it doesn't matter which website. Uh, it works no on YouTube uh, it's and uh, everything. Regular, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, and if you want, uh, maybe you can dif uh, you can limit YouTube access, and uh, maybe because you, I don't know, in a company network, you always have like that guy who downloads stuff and things like this, and you can actually um, things uh, because that's also a new feature. Uh, we got a daily report or a weekly report that tells you each device uh, their the daily consumption, which application they use. And it allows you to manage your network and make sure you can download everything uh, on the fly. Uh, no, sorry, uh, you can make uh, sure to manage everything. Nice. So I would guess uh, you could combine uh, a cable internet with ADSL provider both at the same time, and that would potentially double your upload speed, uh, double your download speed. But the, how does it work? Uh, well, uh, after considering the technical details, ways it's more uh, you would require an engineer to answer this question. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if you really want, I, I can. Uh, we can get in touch a bit later, and I can put you in touch with our engineers. Okay. So, what are the other uh, special features about using a Synology router? Uh, well, so I mentioned Cloud Station. No, we. Um, one of the feature that I can actually use at home myself is the VPN server. So the router can be turned into a VPN server, and you can you know, use it um, to connect to remote website to from another country. So, if I'm in, let's say, in London. With the router, mm -hmm. I can make a VPN server and access through it when I'm in China. For instance, yeah. So yeah, then I can access yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and also, we were, we're releasing a new package called uh, Intrusion Detection. So basically, the router is going to analyze every package that comes in. And if uh, one of them is flagged as suspicious, uh, we'll uh, remove it directly. So you do deep packet analysis, yep. and you are you introduced with 1900 AC a whole bunch of deep packet analysis kind of stuff For that life. nobody else was doing uh, in, yeah, in yeah. consumer yeah, routers. It's pretty it's pretty enterprise grade, and uh, it's one of the things you know, we we'd like to bring because those features are pretty cool and very useful. Uh, but the problem is they had two issues at first: price because they tend to be on very high end router, and usability because uh, you needed someone to configure them, to maintain it, and now uh, most of it is automated through the interface and require very, very little configuration. All right, so um, so Synology, are you the coolest uh, NAS company in the world? Uh, I guess so, yeah. But we're definitely uh, the one that provides the, the best user experience and probably the most reliable, reliable hardware too. So all these uh, NAS, are super popular with uh, medium, uh, mid-sized companies or just consumers? And um, well, it depends on the size of the NAS, of course. So on our uh, smaller and maybe less expensive NAS, we're... Something uh, like this one? Yeah, we're uh, very happy to enjoy very, uh, very high market share in Europe. So we would like to thank everyone about this. Yeah. And that's the same on the small business, even on the enterprise segment. We do have a lot of recognition. So now, in a lot of customer survey, uh, Synergy start to be named around big names like Cisco, IBM, Dell, and we're recognized even on the maybe high end market. Whoa! Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of things happening in terms of technology in that world. Mm -hmm. So it says right here, uh, powered by Intel, yep. but you do ARM stuff too. Uh, yes, we do. We do. Uh, I mean, is, you've been doing for a long time. Well, this is, uh, for example, ARM base, for instance. What is the CPU here? Uh, if I remember, it's a Qualcomm, but I don't have the exact details for you okay. right now. Um, so that's, um, that's, is this also an IoT home gateway? Well, uh, it depends because the thing is, as IoT, you don't really have standards right now. So we decided to wait a bit. To so it doesn't do uh, Z-Wave or all these, uh, no, these Zigbees, no, no. but potentially you could plug in a USB dongle and support it maybe. Because uh, maybe. we also provide, especially for NAS, we provide an SDK on our site. It's on developer.synergy.com. And if you want to start uh, using your device with our product, it's very easy to actually program your own thing because everything is Linux-based. Uh, so if you have the right drivers and a bit of experience in this area, 
you can actually make your product work on our, on our product see. using our SDK. It's not open source, is it? Um, it's uh, part of this is open source because it's based on some uh, lin it's, it's based on a couple of open source technology, and then we also have a proprietary part. Proprietary bunch of stuff in there. But the API is really, uh, uh, is it successful? Is there a lot of people yeah, using uh, it to we do implement have stuff? A lot of third party developers. Some of them are actually uh, very useful, so we decided to integrate them in our own package center so you can access them directly from the user interface. I think in total, officially supported package, we got at least 70 of them. And it goes you know, from a wiki to an entire ERP. And uh, after that, we get the entire community, a big ecosystem built around Synergy. I don't have the exact numbers for this, but uh, I know there are uh, very, a lot of very famous um, repository on the internet that features dozens of packages. Do you have BitTorrent Sync support? Um, you have a well, we do have our own BitTorrent clients. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's not. Oh, you mean BitTorrent Sync? Yeah, the, the, okay. they have this thing where they yeah. synchronize, and yeah, I, I you could question. fill up a NAS and fill it and synchronize with another NAS or uh, something. For this, actually, we do have Cloud Station that allows you yeah. to sync from NAS to NAS in real time. That's been uh, that's working for a couple of years now. On the most uh, higher end model, we also provide something called snapshot replication. That allows you basically every five minutes the NAS is going to take a snapshot of your data and replicate it to a distant site. And this is um, because it's a new technology that works on a file system that we improve called ButterFS. Uh, unfortunately, it runs only on Intel-based product uh, because ARM doesn't have the right instruction yet. Uh, but it allows you to replicate without impacting the system in terms of uh, performance and will um, yeah, and will uh, allow you to re basically replicate your data abroad w without performance hit. Nice. And all these NAS have USB ports. Uh, yeah, you can plug yeah. in a two terabytes and it just puts yeah. it in and uh, adds it actually, or something. You can use, uh, you, you got two ways of expanding data uh, storage, either through your USB ports. So now we have all our NAS feature USB 3, so it goes pretty fast. Uh, but what we would recommend is actually use those USB hard drive for backup your essential data. But some of our NAS uh, actually do provide at the back an eSATA port. So they are a member of the Plus series. And uh, those eSATA ports can be used with our expansion unit called DX513. Okay. And uh, you will just plug them to your NAS. And they will, you know, it's, it's plug and play. And after, within the storage, the NAS storage manager, yeah. we'll be able to access the other drives uh, as if they were you know, inside. Part of, yeah, yeah. As fast as if they were yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, use them. In, you, know, the, you can use them in the same volumes. Uh, How many extra do you add on the? It depends on the model. Uh, most of them can have the five bay expansion unit. So that means how many in the here? Four, four plus five. Yeah, yeah. You can have nine. Yeah. And the uh, biggest one after in consumer grade. Uh, oops. <laughs> Yeah. The in the big for the consumer one we got the DS eighteen fifteen plus, which can uh, so the base unit has eight bay, and you can add two expansion units, so for a total of eighteen bay. That's uh, completely awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, but it's consumer. Yeah, yeah like yeah. rich I, consumer or how much they cost? Um, if I, I don't have the price in Switzerland, I remember uh, US. Uh, US. I would say the eighteen fifteen plus is around one thousand US dollar. But that will require to be confirmed because uh, right. I don't have the price for one. What's the price here for uh, RT twenty six hundred AC? It's not out yet, so we don't have any price yet. So you might, uh, depending on your strategy, you might want to be uh, even more of a gangbuster product than the previous one. Oh, it might be. Uh, what's the price of the nineteen? Uh, this AC? one is about from one hundred fifty to two hundred US dollar per member property. Great, cool. So. Uh, so basically, it's going to be a faster ARM processor? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got this one is 1.7 gigahertz, if I remember. Yeah. And the second one was 1.0. But the, um, the thing is, it's just because you got more connected users. Uh, the performance on the previous one is already very acceptable. Uh, that's actually the one we use in uh, Synergy, like, uh, because we really like to, do our own, to use our own product. And the like on my floor is completely working with our router currently. All right, so that's awesome. Uh, so all these apps people develop on the NAS, uh, yeah. are many of them working in the router, uh, or no. they have to be different? Okay, so the thing is, the router currently it's only Synergy apps because it's a different SDK. Uh, but it, or, or, yeah, so currently we just care, uh, start developing them one by one because they also need to maintain uh, to reach our quality standards. 
because we don't want to release an app that's not working or that might not be good in terms of user experience. So they are all tested. And so currently it's only our app that are running on the router. And Google tried to make a router at some point. They're kind of like selling stuff and they're working together with some people to do that. Yeah. Uh, are you using some of their ideas or...? Uh, we do like to think they're using a bit of ours. Uh, like just yesterday I saw some Google people here looking at the router. Yeah. Uh, after, you know, if they, if they have a good idea uh, that no one is doing before and it's really awesome for the users, uh, what's the point of ignoring it? Uh, yeah. They're doing some kind of a smart load balancing, or what's it called, uh, 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 improving the connectivity somehow. Uh, uh, we do have something similar, it's called a Smart Connect. So basically, the two networks, because you know, the router, they are broadcasting on two bands, uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. And they are uh, sometimes it's a bit confusing for some people. Like they wonder, well, what should I use? And uh, the problem is those two bands has two, two different technical specs. And for some 5G is better when you are closer from the router, but faster. So what we do is uh, we merge those two bands together into one network using Smart Connect. And like and the router would decide automatically which band you should use. And from the user point of view, it's completely transparent. That's awesome. So you just one Wi-Fi hotspot and that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, like, let's say maybe there's too many people on the 5G. It's going to yeah. switch you to the 2.4. Or maybe you get a bit further from the router. Your signal is really straight strength. So it doesn't really, it's not really useful to use 5G anymore. And you're going to switch automatically to 2.4. So let's say it's an awesome router. Maybe it's the best, right? Uh, you'd, it makes sense to have both the router and the NAS. They work together nicely. Um, it depends. Okay, you just use the router, that's it. Well, you can use, you know, we would prefer if you use both at the same time. Um, but the router can work as a standalone thing. And you can uh, use it to NAS with a couple of nice features. Like one of them is, for instance, uh, are you familiar with Wake on LAN? Uh, yeah. So like, for instance, you're, you want to start uh, your NAS uh, remotely. You can do that from the router interface. Uh, we get a Wake on LAN section. Or maybe it's through uh, everything that's related to port forwarding. Because you know, our NAS are designed to um, are, de are designed to discuss with routers uh, to establish the port forwarding rules. So that can be done very quickly and very conveniently if you use both of them together. But th there is a couple of uh, there are a couple of synergies. Uh, but obviously, if you have a synergy NAS, you might expect from your network to perform very very fast. So you might need to invest in a. In a, in a faster router anyway, so that's why we start providing very high-speed router now. Cool, high-speed, uh, multi-gigabit uh, ethernets and yeah. everything is super nice. All right, that's awesome.